Hello, and um, welcome to our fourth work example in uh, the classical mechanics course. Please pause the video for a moment and uh, read the problem, and then we'll solve it together. OK, so I uh, hope that you've read the problem and you have some idea of how to solve it. But let's see what happens. This is one of those problems that I'm not uh, super terribly fond of. And the reason is it's got numbers in it. I hate them. No, I don't hate numbers, but it's so much easier to solve problems with uh, symbols. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use symbols first and put numbers at the end. Therefore, our mass is going to be m. Our spring constant is going to be k. That's a lower case k. That's a force, that's a velocity. And that is pretty much all we need. Now, how we're going to solve this problem, we're going to we're looking for the resonance frequency. That is the frequency that gives the maximum amplitude. And as you will know from class in the textbook, there is a specific value of omega, the force in term, that gives that um, um, effect, the, the resonance effect. Uh, we've also seen that the peak of the resonance is becomes narrower as uh, the height of the resonance increases. But in here, we're only worried to with finding the position of the resonance. And before we do that, let's just uh, make sure that we understand the physics of the problem. We got a system of this type. These are mass m, your spring constant k, gravity points down. And um, that is all that we need. OK, then we have an expression for the uh, value of omega at the resonance that is omega resonance value is equal to omega naught square minus two beta square whole under square root of course where omega naught is the proper frequency of the system and beta is the damping uh, factor we don't have either, but we have a way to calculate them. Indeed, omega naught is given by square root of k over m. It's the classic spring mass constant uh, system. So in this case, we have numerical values. I'm going to plug those in. 150 is k. There are always make sure that you check they're in the proper units newton over meters that's si units kilograms that's si units so all we need to do is replace the numbers without the need to do any conversion so 150 divided by 6 is 25 square root of 25 is 5 and that's seconds to the minus 1 some textbooks will indicate this as radians per second or I prefer not to use units for radians because radians are defined as ratios of two lengths and therefore are dimensionless. But up to you. It's um, really not that relevant as long as you keep good track of what you're doing. Okay, that's first piece. We got omega naught. What about beta? Is it given? Well, no, but it's easy to calculate. The damping force I'm just going to write it in absolute value is going to be equal to some constant b times the velocity.
and uh, beta is defined as b over 2n. Let's see, what do we have? We have the force at some point at some for some value of the velocity, and we have the corresponding value of the velocity, so we can calculate b easily. We know the mass. We do, we do b divided by 2m, and we get beta. Awesome. Let's do it. Oops, sorry, wrong button. B is equal to F damping divided by V equal to 80. Let's also make sure it's Newtons. Okay, it's the right units. Meters per second for the velocity. That's also the right units. V is two meters per second. And that gives me value of 40 in whatever the units are, force divided by velocity, you work it out. And uh, this allows me to easily calculate beta as b, again, b over 2m, which is 40 divided by 6. I don't know why the problem gave, gave me this strange number, but that's what we got. Uh, it's actually 2m, so it's 2 times 6. And that's 40 divided by... 12 is like 3.3 .3 periodic. Okay. Now, the good thing is that the units here, since everything was in the proper SI system, are also inverse seconds. Then we just go and calculate omega at the resonance as once more omega naught. So we got this part. Omega naught minus two beta square on the square root. And that gives me, let's see, I got five square minus two times beta, we said it's 3.3, two periodic three square. Um, if you Work it out as gives us 1.66, and again that's inverse seconds. Notice that that's uh, that's quite different from omega naught. So in this case, the, the damping you know, beta is relatively large, and that makes the position of the resonance move away quite a bit from omega naught. Remember that if uh, the damping is small, the, res the frequency for resonance is very close to the natural frequency of the system. As beta becomes larger, that frequency moves uh, to lower values of omega. But at any rate, this was the required uh, quantity that we needed to calculate, and we're done. Thank you for watching. And um, stay tuned for the next um, the next solved problem.